Hello and welcome to a Tinge Ginge. Now today I'm going to be doing a video on my hatchling ball pythons and my sort of, it's kind of a ground rack but it's not a ground rack, they sort of get to a certain size and they go into larger tubs but today what I want to do is I want to update the water bowls that I actually have for these snakes. Now I use quite a large deli cut for them and I thought that was going to be ideal, I thought because of the amount of water that's going to be in there it's going to be quite hard for them to tip it over and to sort of make a mess in their tub but what I've actually found out is that they, they tip it over quite easily, either when they're feeding or they're shedding or just generally moving about. They tend to knock that tub over, they tend to flood the bottom of it, and it just creates a mess. And I find myself constantly, constantly cleaning and trying to make sure that they don't have the, the, the substrate too moist in there. I want it to be fairly dry. Um, so after watching Paul from Urban Restrictors, he uses the grey tube to actually put the bowls into. Now, I've kind of done something similar with my adults rack. Um, it's not really the same, um, obviously over in the UK it's quite hard to get hold of the, the trays with the actual moulded bowl cups in um, and they can be quite expensive to get them and f to be honest I think it's, it is a good idea but for the amount that you're going to pay for them I just don't think it's worth it to be honest and at the end of the day with the bowl that I want to put in there if the snake wants to move it to a, a specific position in the in the tub then that, that's fine with me, I don't really care as long as they're not tipping the water over so that's what I'm going to try and do today. Um, hopefully it is going to work. If not, I've got a little solution to try and make it slightly better. I'm going to be using my 3D printer um, and actually 3D printing some little feet that are going to clip onto the bottom of the tube and hopefully that will just make it a little bit more sturdy just to stop them from knocking it over. Um, that's the idea. Whether it works or not, I don't know, but we're going to give it a try and uh, and see if it, if it does work and make it a little bit easier. Um, I'm going to be using four ounce deli cups for this. Now, I didn't want to go for a huge cup this time, I'm going to have something slightly smaller. One, it's going to give them a little bit more room in the tub, and also they don't need that much water, to be honest, because I do come in here regularly, probably about four or five times a day, to be honest. So I can't help myself. If I'm sat here bored, I just come out here and spend an hour out here just, just staring at the walls, basically. Um, but yeah, I don't need a lot of water in these little tubs, so. Hopefully the four ounce daily cup is going to be just enough and the bit of tube that I've bought is going to be big enough to support them. Um, also, if you haven't seen my Instagram post up, up, I'm nine days away from cutting my first clutch, which was the butter spinner blast to the leopard pastavi. Um, really, really excited, can't wait. We did have nine eggs at the beginning, but one of the eggs went bad, so we're now down to eight. Again, it's, it's not a problem, these things happen, you, you can't control everything like, as I've said in my previous videos, but in nine days time, hopefully we are going to cut these eggs. As long as the eggs look ready and I can feel the baby in them, they've deflated enough to where I feel that they are ready to be cut, if they haven't pipped already, so who knows, but nine days, it's going to be absolutely amazing. And then probably about, I think about four or five days after that, we should have my Exantic Clown Clutch being laid, and then a few days after that, I believe we're going to have my bumblebee to the leopard pastavi clutch being laid so fingers crossed they should be laid around that time so that's going to be really really exciting so we're going to be cutting some eggs and also getting some new eggs which is going to be absolutely fantastic and i've also probably got another three girls that are due to ovulate so it's it's, it's going well so far fingers crossed it keeps going in the direction i want it to go to now before i quickly get into this video i just want to show you these tubs now I've just gone out and bought these tiles, they look absolutely incredible. Now these are going to be for the new rack I'm building, now these are going to be sort of for my grow on uh, rack, basically once the snakes get a bit too big for the hatching rack they're going to be transferred into these tubs. Now these are absolutely ideal, um, I've seen a couple of people use these, they're just from Ikea, they're the Trofast, I think that's how you pronounce it, Trofast tubs, they're really nice and sturdy, secure, um, decent amount of space in them. So I'm hoping to be building a custom rack using this as a trial run. Um, I do want to build my own aluminium rack, like you see with the ARS and Freedom Breeders and all those types of racks. I want to try and make my own rack as close to that. Um, I'm pretty close, I've got the, the metal and all the stuff I need to actually make the rack. The last thing I need to work on is actually getting the heat in for it, which I've, I've pretty much decided what I want to use, but um, it, it's just a case of just looking into it a little bit more and then working out what I'm going to need and things like that. So yeah, this is going to be really exciting. If this turns out pretty decent, then I will be making a rack for my full size adult females. Um, and yeah, it's, hopefully it's just going to take my snake room to that next level, just making it look a little bit more professional and just being a little bit more aesthetically pleasing to me.
So as you can see, we've got an absolute mountain of tub uh, holders now. Um, they fit in absolutely perfectly. If I just grab one, you can see once I actually put the deli cup inside, that fits in there absolutely perfectly. It's got a little bit of clearance on the bottom as well if there is anything that goes underneath it. So that's absolutely ideal and that sits in there perfectly. Whether that's going to be stable enough to stop the babies knocking over, I'm not sure, but I have got those little feet that I showed you at the beginning that um, I can put on the bottom of these just to try and make it a little bit more sturdy. But the next thing I've got to do is where I've used these on the bandsaw, I've just got to go around those edges, see it's quite rough, and I've just got to take those edges off. Just there. Just going to use a craft knife that I've got, or a standing blade, it doesn't really matter what you use. I'm just going to take all those edges off so there's no sharp edges that the snakes can catch themselves on or hurt themselves on. And then once that's done, they'll be ready to go. I finally got to the end of it. It felt like an eternity doing this and getting all those rough edges off, but they're all finally done. So now it's just a case of getting them into the hatchling rack and uh, trying them out. Hopefully it's going to work, but um, you never know. I've got those little feet that I can use just to try and stabilise them, but I'm hoping it is going to make a difference. It's going to be a bit difficult trying to get the substrate from not going underneath this and on top of them, but I think it's going to be better than what I'm actually using at the minute. And obviously I've got the smaller cup, so if they do split it, there's not going to be that much mess in the tub anyway. So I'm going to get them all changed out now and see how they look. Okay, so after nearly getting my face absolutely ripped off, I finally got all the pots in, um, the little pot holders and the pots in, and I think they look really good to be honest. Um, I'm not gonna see if they're gonna work until a few days later, um, so I will be doing an update video in, in some other video that I'll do, I'll just touch on them just to show how they go. But to be honest, I think they look really good. They're relatively cheap. I think those four ounce cups I bought were about a tenner, and I've got a pack of 100 of them. Um, so I think they're really, really inexpensive. A couple of people are probably gonna tell me that I can just use the little ceramic bowls just because they are heavier and, and the, the snakes can't tip them over, but I don't have the time to sit there and scrub bowls, if I'm honest. Um, these tubs, I can give them a rinse. I'll probably use them a couple of times in the tubs. When they start to get a bit grimy, then I will just chuck them away. Um, I don't wanna spend hours and hours scrubbing bowls because my OCD is so bad that I'll sit there until every single bit of grime is off that bowl and I just, I don't have the time to sit there and do that. So for me, these are just ideal. Um, I don't know if they're dishwashable safe, but I can always chuck them in there if needed. They'll probably end up flying about everywhere and breaking, so it's not a good idea, but it doesn't take two seconds just to give them a rinse and then just to put them back and then just order some more. They're, they're dirt cheap and the piece of plastic I bought, um, I think that tubing was like £5.50 from B&Q, so it literally took no time at all to get it all set up and done. And I think it's if you put more effort in at the beginning, then you're just going to get more out of it in the end. And you just want to try and make life as easy for yourself as possible. So by doing this, I'm hoping I don't have to clean them out as much and, and dry the tubs out and things like that. So I'll quickly give you a, a look at what they look like in the tubs. So this is how they look, and you can see they've already started to investigate and move in and, and see what's going on about. So yeah, I think they look really, really nice. They fit the tubs really well. Um, you can see they've got oodles of space in there now compared to what they had before. Um, and yeah, he's already wrapped around that, so time will tell to see if, if he can actually knock that over and spill it, but to be honest, it's such a small amount of water, I don't think it'd be a problem. If I was to just put the deli cup in there on its own, then he'd definitely spill that 100%. Um, hopefully this little little bit of tubing is going to just to stop that. If not, I'll chuck some little 3D printed feet on it just to try and make it a little bit more sturdy, but I love how he's sort of checking it out already. But yeah, that's him. This is the, the nice GHI Mojave I've got. She's a really special one. You see how dark she is, it's incredible. But yeah, so this one's on um, on Coco, and you can see it just, it's almost the gray. It looks like the professional trays you get with the um, the molded bowl holders in. But and today with this, this can be moved around and stuff. So if the snake wants to push it to one side, it can move it to wherever it wants to, to be honest. I'm, I'm, I'm happy with that doing that. But yeah, I think it looks absolutely incredible. This is another one that does like to tip his water bowl over quite a bit. Um, I think he's just going into shit actually, but he's normally um, a lot more colourful than that. But yeah, again, he's another troublemaker. He's always making his his, his uh, tub really wet. He's always getting water everywhere. So I'm hoping that he's going to stop him from doing that. That's one more that I've got here. And yeah, I'm hoping this is going to do the trick. 
and you can see they're they're not too big for this sub. I think they're sort of getting to the point where they do need to be upgraded in the next month or so. Um, if they continue feeding the way they are and growing, then I will put them into that that next size up tub, which I showed you at the beginning of the video. But obviously, I need to get that rack built. So by the time these guys are up to size, that rack probably will be built. So um, make sure you are tuned into this channel. Don't want to miss it. I know it is really hard to get those aluminium racks over into the UK and they can be an absolute fortune. I'm going to try and build one for around the price of about £400. That's the racking, the tubs, the heating, everything. Um, whether it works out like that, I, I, I don't know. I'm doing research into it. I've literally just got to sort the heating element out of it and then hopefully I can actually have some, some decent looking racks that I like the look of. So that's going to be the end of the video. I hope you've enjoyed watching. If you do have any questions or, or any queries about anything that I've shown in the video, then just drop me a message down below or you can direct message me on my Instagram. Um, all my information is down below. So if you want to check any of that out, then go ahead. But thank you for watching. I appreciate your support. Everything you do sort of to, to support me in any way, it just, it just makes me want to do more and more videos. Um, I'm not this sort of person that just chucks a video out for the sake of it. Uh, I see a lot of people just putting out videos on pointless stuff and you think you've you've basically covered that video two weeks ago, why are you doing it again? So I try not to repeat myself too much on the channel. So my videos are a little bit sparse, but I like to think that I'm putting out new content that you're not gonna see on my channel already. So let me know what you think in the comments. If you want me to do more regular videos on, on the same sort of stuff, then I can do that, it's not a problem, but I just wanna try and make content that's gonna to make you want to watch and it's going to make you enjoy watching as well so thank you for watching i hope you have enjoyed it and i'll see you in the next video but all i want to do is with the uh with the little cups there i'm literally just, oh my god <sighs> oh you cheeky little right um where's my tweezers hang on